Whenever we encounter a reaction for the first time, I always think it's helpful to see some actual bonds and atoms, some real chemical transformations of the particular reaction we're studying. And in the case of substitution at sp3 carbons, we're looking at substituting the carbon bromine bond in this methyl sp3 carbon with a carbon nucleophile bond. As you go through this set of reactions, you should see a common pattern that emerges, and you should begin to build your experience with recognizing different nucleophiles. You'll see that the diverse range of nucleophiles that undergo this reaction have the common characteristic of bearing a negative charge, so they're suitable as electron donors. In the first example, you'll recognize the nucleophile hydroxide, which can replace that carbon bromine bond with a carbon oxygen bond to make the new product an alcohol. In the next example, we're replacing the hydrogen and hydroxide with an alkyl group, R, like a methyl group. So we call this an alkoxide nucleophile, and we make the ether functional group upon doing the substitution reaction. The next two reactions are perfectly analogous to the first, except we've replaced the oxygen nucleophile with a sulfur nucleophile to create new carbon-sulfur bonds, as in the case of the thiol, or the sulfide, shown here, which derive from the sulfhydryl anion and the thiolate anion, respectively. In this last set of examples, we can see carbon-based nucleophiles, as in the case of this acetylid anion, or this cyanide anion, to make new carbon-carbon bonds, real yielding products that are the alkyne and nitrile, shown here. The last two examples are examples of a more heteroatom nucleophiles. The iodide could replace the bromide to make an alkyl iodide, or this functional group, which is known as the azido functional group, can make a new carbon-nitrogen bond and make an alkyl azid. In the next webcast, we're going to look at the mechanisms by which these substitution reactions at sp3 carbon centers take place.